Hey everybody. All right, so we're gonna do some more information on the competencies from your behavior analysis. So if you have gotten your reports back out and you're taking a quick look, you're looking for a little bit more information, some deep dive, then here's where you're gonna find it. So for this video, we're gonna specifically talk about emotionally objective and resilience. So uh, you should have seen this towards the top of your report and then broken down multiple times throughout your outmatch. So you're gonna see this uh, multiple times and you're gonna want to be looking for it. My best suggestion for you is going to be when you pull your report up uh, in a digital version rather than in a printed version, if you use the control F function and type in uh, resilience, that will be enough to pull this up multiple times and then you can just tab through and find all of the places that this is going to um, show up in your report. Okay, so emotionally objective and resilience. We usually spend quite a bit of time on this topic when you are having your review with myself or one of my team members. So this is how you respond to challenges. This also has a lot to do with stress management. Um, do you tell someone when you're overwhelmed or when you're feeling overwhelmed? Uh, we talk very, very often here on some breathing techniques, both in Metanoia or in Phoenix, if you've gone through either one of those programs. And we also do a lot of skills on how to journal or what to be writing down. So if you feel like this is something that you need to be working on. And again, these are behaviors. So we can influence these uh, specific items and they can be changing. So if you have taken your assessment, maybe it's a little bit older or you are uh, experiencing some things in life that may be influencing your behaviors, this can be something that you can make a tactical change in and try to influence the behaviors in a positive form. So let's break that down just a little bit more. This report, remember, is best served in a partnership with you and your manager. If you feel like you kind of have a lot going on, we always all have a lot going on, but maybe a little bit more than normal, sometimes the best thing for us to do is strictly verbalize it. So if you step into your manager's office or maybe you just send a quick text or email that says, I'm feeling overwhelmed today or my plate is extremely full today, that's where we need to start the journey. And that feels like it might be elementary. However, acknowledging that we are overwhelmed or that our plate may be too full is a good place to start. That also gives the person that is work that we work for or whose team we are on the ability to not add to it and open up some time to maybe take some of those things off of our plate. If you're a manager or a salesperson specifically, we can end up with a lot of little tiny things on our plates that we maybe aren't specifically assigned to do, but we take ownership of. And it is in our best interest to raise our hand and say, mm, the plate's extra full today and give someone else the ability to take some of those little tiny things off of our plate. Like I said, writing it down will also be a good one. So some of us are really good at remembering all of the things that we have to do. I am not one of those people. <laughs> Um, I have a lot of lists and that also kind of backfires on me. So when I'm feeling very overwhelmed, I consolidate everything. You guys see me teach from this whiteboard all the time, but in all honesty, it also works as my active to-do list very often because I consolidate all my lists. If you're good at keeping everything in your head, sometimes it's better to write it all down and get it in front of you where you can physically uh, cross it off. When we were all in high school, uh, our teachers used to make us take notes. I thought I saw a funny meme the other day where the idea of taking notes today is kids holding up their phone and just taking a picture of the whiteboard or whatever, the smart board that they're working on. But there's a lot of value in terms of writing things down and getting it out of our brain. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, 
one of the things would be to ask for help, maybe even your significant other, or your partner. That's always a good moment to say, hey, I'm feeling overwhelmed and maybe they can empty the dishwasher, your kids, something like that. The next thing would be to work on some of the breathing exercises or uh, coping techniques that we talk about throughout class, if you've been through that with us. The third thing would be to write it down because it's not that you can't get through all of the things that you've committed to, but you do have to get them done in a certain priority and you do have to get everything out on paper so that you can think correctly. Your creativity score comes into play you need to be able to think through the items that are actually on your list. So <clears throat> here's the next challenge that I have for you if this is something that you're working on. We talked about your relationship with your manager, which is super important. We all have our own feelings about how role-playing works and working through challenges. So my suggestion would be to go to your uh, manager or whoever you report to and specifically role play, how you correct a prospect, a client, maybe even something as simple as your child or your significant other, a friend, on a misconception. Um, so for a client or a prospect, that could be a misconception on how you do business or your product uh, for someone in your family. That could be a misconception on anything. But how do you correct someone on a misconception? The idea of emotionally objective and resilient is not if we get knocked down, it's how quickly we get up once we have been knocked down. So what we're trying to do is be confronted with some something that's a little bit of a speed bump or maybe even a little bit bigger wall and how we <clears throat> confront the challenge and get over it. So take that time and work through the objections with your manager and you can role play a couple of different scenarios. Remember your manager has most likely been through our training. If not yet, they will be coming through it along with you. They have also have some of these similar scores on their report. And so they're working through this same thing with you. You can also do those role plays with your coaches if you'd like, or you can uh, debrief your role plays with your coaches when you call in for your weekly accountability coach. Your optimism score <clears throat> is very similar to emotionally objective and resilient. For those of you specifically in a sales role, you got a second report most likely that has optimism on it. This is that do it again mentality. Um, again, it's that it's not when you get knocked down, it's, it's not if you get knocked down, it's when you do how quickly you get back up. So take those two reports, put those two pieces together and have a conversation with your manager, whoever you report to about what you can do when you are feeling overwhelmed, the best way to communicate with each other and have a conversation about what you say and how you handle the objections when you're feeling overwhelmed. All right, I hope everybody takes just a little bit of time to breathe life in. And if you have any questions about this specifically, don't hesitate to reach out to your coach or one of the other coaches at Oxygen. Have a great day, everybody.